Hello everybody, how are you doing? This webio explores the possibilities of extending Miami's metro rail across the Biscayne Bay to Miami Beach. Miami is one of the biggest tourist destinations in the world. Its airport is a big gateway to the entire South Florida region. So many tourists come from the airport flooding Miami streets. Many of them aim to go to the beach and nightclubs along Miami's beach right here. However, how do they get there? Currently, the metro rail only goes as far as downtown. It does not cross the Biscayne Bay. So what this line aims to do is to extend the metro rail system from the airport to connect to the port and Miami Beach, both hotbeds of tourist activity. This will actually be an extension of the metro rail's orange line. So after this is completed, the green and orange line will only serve Alapata Station and Arlington Heights Station because west of there they deviate to go to Palmetto for the Green Line and the airport for the Orange Line. So this is the Orange Line right here. This will all be underground except a small portion right here which deviates from the current Metro Rail. And speaking of underground, let's go through the colors. So we have blue which is underground alignments and this will actually have to be relatively deep because the Biscayne Bay is a deep harbor, so I'm thinking this will have to be 75 to 100 feet deep. So the stations will have to incorporate long escalators or elevators for this. We also have purple and green. So purple is elevated, green is at ground alignment. This here is just for the ramp going from the existing elevated line just south of Alapata down underground. And speaking of underground, Santa Clara and Civic Center, even though they're existing stations on the green line, this new orange line deviation will have the stations underground. So it will be an elevated station on top of a road, which in turn is on top of an underground station. Finally, I've depicted where passenger tunnels are, and those are orange. So for example, Marlins Park, I have a tunnel directly connecting the line to the park itself. I also have a tunnel in Port as well as South Beach and Lincoln Road. These are just to serve high traffic areas within a block or two from the station themselves. Obviously, all stations will have the typical entrances on the four corners of the respective intersections. The length of this line is 9.41 miles and its top speed is 60 miles per hour. So without further ado, let's zoom in to Alapata Station where the line begins. So here we are at Alapata Station. So as I said already, the green and orange line will both go on these two elevated tracks right here and stop at the station. Just south of the station, because north is actually oriented this way, just south, the two tracks will deviate, each going to the east of the respective green line existing alignment. So this will be a ramp right here where the new trains go and sorry I cannot change the elevations in a gradient of a path in Google Earth. I wish that was an option but I have to deal with this right now. So imagine this is a ramp of a train track eventually going underground all the way here. So sadly this means that 31st and 32nd street will have to be blocked off here. There are no homes here but still this will not be able to connect to 12th Avenue due to this new line the lateral have to cut through. But it's only those two roads and sooner than later we are under 12th Avenue. So this now is the underground subway and the existing one is elevated. So we have a subway under the road elevated above the road. So Santa Clara station which serves mostly an industrial district along with a couple, a couple hotels and apartments will be underground. So this will be underground. The existing Green Line station will remain elevated. So this is the elevated station right here. Imagine another underground below it. That is where the new Orange Line station will be. So after Santa Clara, the alignment continues underneath 12th Avenue until Civic Center. Civic Center is a big employment center. And a station already exists here, so I don't want to explain too much. But this is a main medical district of the city of Miami. Lots of people come in and out of here to work. So connecting the additional neighborhoods that this extension serves to Civic Center will bring a lot of demand, especially working demand and permanent resident demand, into Civic Center. So after Civic Center, the line deviates from both the elevated green line 
and 12th Avenue. It goes just a little bit to the west. And the next station is Marlins Park. Now, sadly, due to the geometry of this line, it was unfeasible to make Marlins Park actually right here. So I made it a block to the east, but then decided to construct an underground passenger tunnel going to the stadium right here. So baseball stadium, speaking of that, baseball st season's about to start. Lots of people come in and out of here of every game. So serving the baseball stadium with a metro rail station will be a big boon. Lots of people will be using this. Besides that season, we also have a couple mid to high end apartments here, along with a lot of medium density diaspora here. And we are getting to the Cuban diaspora here. So those, some of this will be permanent population using this. Bus stations will connect Marlins Park with the local area as well as East Little Havana, which is the next station. Marlins Park is located underneath 7th Street and 13th Avenue. So after that, the line now continues under 13th Avenue and then bends back to the east. And this goes to East Little Havana. Now I know due to geography again, I couldn't serve Central Little Havana, but this is the closest I could get. Little Havana, not only does it have the obvious Cuban diaspora, but it also is a big tourist destination. And many tourists are going to be coming from Miami Beach and downtown Miami right here. Obviously, you could take the hop on hop off bus, but if you're in a hurry, you could just take this metro rail to East Little Havana right here and explore all that Little, Little Havana has to offer. Lots of restaurants, lots of ethnic facilities and festivals. So this station will be located under Flagler Street and 12th Avenue. So after East Little Havana, the line continues under Flagler Street and then it deviates to the north for a little bit until it gets to North 2nd Street. It crosses Interstate 95 and it enters a downtown. It intersects the existing metro rail line at Government Center. Now Government Center is also served by all three lines of the Miami Metro Mover, so it's an easy way to connect the entire downtown Miami area from the arena here to Brickell to this new line to go wherever they need to go. Government Center is a big government, obviously, and also business center, though most of the businesses are located at the next station, which is Bayfront Park. Bayfront Park is one of the most important stations of the line. It is located at the intersection of North 2nd Street and Biscayne Avenue. So look at all these buildings right here. These are mostly business towers, but we also have a couple luxury hotels. For example, a JW Marriott and the Hyatt are located in this neighborhood right here. So all this is within walking distance of where I propose a Bayfront Park station to be. Not to mention that Bayfront Park has many festivals of its own and it also has its own mall right here along the shops and the shores. Many tour boats take off from Bayfront Park to explore many islands of Miami, for example, Star Island, and go around Miami Beach. So many tourists want to start their exploration of Miami at Bayfront Park, and it's also a big business center. So two for the win, it's a good station. So here again, we have the underground walkways, and that'll cross Biscayne Avenue, and it goes to the park on one side, and the city on the other side. So after Bayfront Park, the line will continue and also this will have to again be relatively deep because of the deep Biscayne Bay, but it continues and the next station is a Port of Miami. Now Port of Miami, multiple cruise ships take off from here every single day. That's te probably 10, 20,000 people, all tourists. Many of them probably don't have a car so they'll have to rely on this new metro rail line to get to the port with ease. Now, obviously this means that the metro rail trains will have to incorporate additional measures for allowing their baggage and other goodies to travel efficiently because most metro rail systems only have space for basic luggage or none at all. Tourists are going to be using this line so overhead bins or something similar would be a great addition to the trains. Many cruise ships stop here. As you can see, when this Google Earth image was taken, we have seven cruise ships. 
and they'll all be connected from this port station right here via again another underground walkway connecting to the south and north terminal. So after port there's no station for 2.83 miles. So if there's any place where the top speed of the trains is hit it is in this section right here. It continues under the Biscayne Bay before finally entering South Beach. It goes under the South Point Park and curves to the north and then we reach South Beach Station. South Beach Station is located under Collins Avenue. It is just one block north of all these buildings right here. Now most of them may seem to be just residential instead of actual hotels but you need to realize Miami again big tourist destination there's a lot of temporary population here and retirement population here as well. So many of these are a combination of vacation rentals and short term Airbnb. Both are heavy generators for public transportation. Many of these people want to go to prominent places like Bayfront Park, Little Havana, the airport and later on we'll see Lincoln Avenue. So all of this has access to South Beach Station. Not to mention that South Point Park is located right here as well as well as South Beach. South Beach is one of the most popular portions of Miami Beach as a whole. So after South Beach the line continues underneath Collins Avenue for five blocks until we reach 5th Street. 5th Street has a mix of apartments but we're also seeing some retail and restaurants show up here. And Collins Avenue north of this point has a lot of commercial service industries, for example, retail and restaurants. So Fifth Avenue is actually where the existing Biscayne Bridge comes from. And from here, the line will go into what is the real central happening places of Miami Beach. So we continue through and look at this density, by the way. Most of this is tourists. So there's not much car ownership here. Very similar to Manhattan and the Johannesburg Metro Rail video if you saw that. So all these people including 11th Street which has a really similar dynamic to 5th Street. All of these people to a majority extent will have to utilize this underground Metro Rail system to go to the various sightseeing points of Miami. So after 11th Street the next station is Lincoln Road. Lincoln Road is again a very 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 important station. I would say it's probably more important than Bayfront Park. On one end we have 15 to 20 floor apartment and vacation rental buildings right here. This is the most dense we have seen in Miami Beach since South Beach. But on the other side we have a subway tunnel, an underground people walker tunnel going for two blocks until they get to the famed Lincoln Road Mall. The Lincoln Road Mall is an eight block long mall of high density residents as well as lots of shops and endless restaurants. Lot of high end shops and boutiques are located along this stretch of road right here. So Miami and shopping, this is probably the place that comes to mind. The entire tourist diaspora of Miami will be connected to Lincoln Road via this station right here. So this station will have to be built to additional capacity because I do think lots of people will be using it day by day. Not to mention that all these stations are within a block from the beach itself. And Lincoln Road, this portion of the beach, again is very busy due to the fact that it's close to a happening point of interior Miami Beach itself. And finally, after Lincoln Road, the final station is 24th Street. This is at the Bass Museum of Art and it's also at Collins Park. So again, nice recreation, tourist destination, close to the beach, it has everything going for it. 24th Street, like Lincoln Road, also has a lot of high-rise and mid-rise residential apartments. Now I was thinking, should we extend this, there are many prominent points further north, for example the Fountain Blue Resort. But I was thinking that most of the actual happening places of Miami Beach are 24th Street and the Bass Museum and South. Besides, to the north there are a couple restaurants and shopping but it's mostly just hotels. So I think an efficient bus system as of now can connect the northern parts of Miami Beach to 24th Street. 
where tourists can connect to the metro rail. Now probably in the future I will extend this further north but the line is already 9.41 miles and it's all underground so it's going to be pretty expensive so I wanted to make sure that the efficiency of the line is maximized. So with that out of the way let's zoom out and see from where we have come. So there you have it my friends a 9.41 mile extension of the Miami Metro lane extending its reach to Marlins Park, East Little Havana, Bayfront Park, Port, South Beach and of course the shopping district of Lincoln Road connecting all these tourist hotspots onto one unified line allowing easy transportation within the city and to its gateway the airport. Now before I leave obviously there's a question of cost is the line worth it? I would say yes, but it depends on the values of the people here. So this video just aims to give an alternative to what has been suggested and they can weigh the pros and cons of this. And speaking of that, I want you to comment on the positives and negatives of this project. What do you like? What you don't like? Do you find any ways to increase its efficiency, increase its ridership, anything you want? Please leave that in the comments. I love discussions. So again, the cost is a big issue. So is it worth tunneling under the Biscayne Bay? It is a four mile long bay, but you're connecting the tourist hotspot with the downtown with the airport. So wait, which one do you want? I would say tourist hotspot to the city and the airport is much more valuable than keeping them separated. The investment will pay off, but it's the city's decision after all. Thank you so much for watching this webio and goodbye.